Hey folks, today I want to talk about ethics and conduct in astrology, uh, especially in counseling astrology. Though some people think that by virtue of uh, being an astrologer or doing astrology that the astrologer is automatically in a counseling relationship to the person uh, whose chart he or she reads. There are some people who think that. So there's that view to contend with, that when we practice astrology, automatically we have a therapeutic benefit to give to somebody because we are tapping into their uh, deeper motivations, urges, and needs. Now, I don't personally think that simply by virtue of knowing astrology that uh, an astrologer is necessarily equipped or totally equipped to deal with uh, people in a therapeutic way. So to me, there is no kind of necessary relationship between astrology and therapeutic benefit to a person, no necessary relationship. But there are some best practices that an astrologer can be grounded in that raise the astrology and really uh, allow it to be sort of therapeutic and genuinely meaningful and helpful for a person. So right off the bat, I am declaring my personal bias to say that I don't really believe that everybody who practices astrology necessarily has the integrity or is uh, equipped totally to deliver therapeutic uh, benefit, even though astrology inherently has the capacity to be therapeutic, but you have to know uh, know how to activate those potentials by delivering it in a way that is really helpful and really empowering. Okay, so uh, story time. Uh, recently, a friend of mine went to consult a uh, Vedic astrologer and um, he wanted to explore his relationship uh, with his girlfriend or that kind of was one of the topics that came up in the session. The astrologer asked him for his girlfriend's birth time and obviously place of birth, etc. And he brought up her chart and the astrologer told my friend, you know, if I were you, I would run. So when he saw my friend's girlfriend's chart, he said to him, if I were you, I would run. So based on his uh, cursory assessment of the potentials of the relationship, based on what he saw in uh, my friend's girlfriend's chart, he came to the conclusion that this should not be a relationship that my friend should be in and that, you know, if I were you, I would run. And when I heard this uh, from my friend, I was like really, really upset. I was so pissed. I was like, how could he? I mean, apart from just being totally unprofessional, it is to me a violation of the conduct and ethics that any astrologer should really have. The truth is, folks, that there are a lot of people who know astrology uh, to varying degrees, obviously, and who... Uh, hang their shingle and they say, you know, come for a session, come for a reading, but they don't have the integrity, which would obviously let them know that that kind of statement, if I were you, I would run, is entirely inappropriate in that con in that context. Uh, the truth is that there are <laughs> some people who know astrology who, in my opinion, should not be in a hundred feet of someone who needs uh, therapeutic counsel. They should not be anywhere around them because they don't have the tools to deal with the person. So in that context, first of all, uh, the client, my friend, did not ask the astrologer what he would do. Uh, so the first thing is that we do not indirectly or directly tell a client what to do. And we do not insert ourselves into the client scenario in that kind of way where, oh, if I were you, I would, um, I would run. There are different ways of establishing empathy in a counseling relationship. The astrologer can share his or her story, personal story, in a way that is helpful and therapeutic, but there are ways of doing that. There are ways of establishing an, a kind of empathic connection by sharing personal details about the astrologer's life, but that has to be handled in a way that is appropriate, right? So the first thing is that this client did not ask for the input of the astrologer in that kind of way. What would have been much more useful in that context, I believe, is to say, for the astrologer to say that 
here are the uh, potential areas of friction based on what I'm seeing. Here are the potential areas of friction uh, in the relationship between you and your partner based on what I have here, the information that I have in front of me. Uh, here they are and what do you think and what has your experience been? that would have been a much more appropriate way of dealing with that scenario rather than just uh, jokingly or not saying, if, if I were you, I would run. I always stress that the paradigm within which an astrologer does his or her work is really, really important and that a client should kind of understand the astrologer that he or she is going to be uh, having a session or a reading with. So in my book, in my paradigm of executing intuitive work. There are different octaves, there are different uh, frequencies and let's say uh, awareness levels that we can approach a particular planet uh, from or a sign energy from. So we can't just know by looking at someone's chart alone and not speaking to them what awareness level, what consciousness level they're coming to their chart with, right? So it is difficult for me to understand how it is that an astrologer could just take uh, someone's chart, um, especially a third party who is not present to give any feedback and say, well, you know what, this looks like a disaster and this person is someone who you should stay far away from because uh, their chart shows that they're just uh, bad news. I have no way of knowing that in my paradigm. My paradigm says that uh, we, over time, uh, evolve in relation to the planets and signs in our chart. So the way that we are in uh, relationship to our Venus or our Saturn at 25 is perhaps different from uh, it is at 50. So I would have to speak to that person to understand where they are, yes? So that's my paradigm, and not to mention that from the get-go, in any case, we are approaching sign energy and planetary energy uh, from different levels of consciousness, and there's no way that I could know that level just by seeing someone's chart. So that's the kind of approach that I have. That's my paradigm. So it is useful for astrologers to be self-reflective, to know what is my paradigm of work, right? And secondly, and importantly, for clients to know what kind of astrologer they are dealing with. So when we look at two charts of people who are in a relationship, uh, we can obviously see the uh, potential points of friction, how the energy flow is going between two people. Yeah, and we can kind of perhaps make some educated guesses about how this might be going. But a central part of that has to be uh, the factor of the awareness because the truth is that there are some people who by the astrology alone by the astrology alone they should not be in a healthy and long-lasting partnership but they do manage to sustain their partnerships in a healthy way so that means that there must be something else because you can have someone or two people rather who have difficult contacts in their chart but who, by their awareness level and perhaps their uh, patience and understanding and a whole host of other personal factors, uh, including lifestyle, uh, are able to uh, bypass or overcome those challenges. It could be a case whereby the challenges spur them on individually to be better people. So we need that friction so that uh, each person in the relationship is uh, pushed or elevated into being a better person, a better version of themselves. So this is the way that I would have to, I see it, and I would not approach someone uh, ever, a client, to say that, you know, this is bad news. It's, it's such a kind of, it really is a way in which the astrologer in that moment is sort of, to me, <laughs> inviting the client to abdicate his or her personal responsibility. Saying to a client, you know, if I were you, I would run, is to me uh, inviting the client to sort of abdicate his or her personal responsibility or agency. The other thing is that uh, we ought not to really use the astrology to 
as an excuse to not participate in life. Some people, especially at the beginning of a romantic relationship, will go to an astrologer and say, okay, here's my uh, birth time, here's this other person's birth time and place of birth and stuff. Check it out for me and see what the potentials are. And the astrologer might look at the two charts and say, well, it doesn't look very good here and perhaps you should stay away. Or if the person happens to study astrology, they may just conclude um, from their own work and their own interpretation that, you know what, I should not uh, be involved with this person. But you know, people, uh, sometimes two charts may not have the most harmonious contacts, but the people have so much value, so much benefit to derive, so much learning and growth that can be had from just being in a relationship with each other. So we can't sometimes people use the astrology to bypass our learning and bypass our lessons. So that's just one thing to think about that. Uh, it's not always about having the most harmonious contacts all the time. Now, I'm not saying that you don't respect the energy flow of both people and how it is that the energy flow interacts and that we should not use that and uh, the insights from that type of interpretation. That's important too. But I'm just saying that we ought to be mindful of using the astrology to kind of bypass our life or bypass the learning and the growth that we need to have. So sometimes uh, two charts may not uh, come together in the most uh, harmonious of ways, but uh, those two people still need to have their interaction and they still have a lot to learn from each other and we should also respect that part of the equation. By the way, I've written a whole essay on uh, astrology for relationships and I think I might make it available for download so I will link that uh, below as well. So if we are astrologers and if we are uh, intending to do work that has integrity, we have to be super careful about how we say things to people and what we say to people who come to us for help and counsel. And we also have to not usurp people's sense of agency, of sovereignty, and their sense of choice. I'm curious about what you think, you know, what guidelines, what uh, ethical codes, what codes of conduct should astrologers go by? What is appropriate? What is not appropriate? Leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, talk soon. Bye.